Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Today, I have Cody Morcom, who is from Wilkes University College of Pharmacy. He is a PharmD candidate for 2020. Uh, he is the pharmacy student body president, the Wilkes University Pharmacy Senate president, uh, part of Phi Lambda Sigma. He's the uh, society treasurer uh, and part of the Pennsylvania Pharmacists Association, and there's some other things that he does. So welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Thank you. Hey, I just wanted to get a little background on you. You uh, entered this contest that I had about Thursday or somewhere in there, and uh, you almost caught up to the leader who had been working diligently for five or six days. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got so connected at your college. Absolutely. So uh, I'm a P3 pharmacy student at Wilkes University in beautiful northeastern Pennsylvania. We are a small university, but we absolutely are, in my belief, one of the best. Um, the school here is fantastic, and they push our students to really succeed in all avenues of pharmacy and outside of it, too. But my backstory with pharmacy school and APHA, we at Wilkes have a massive APHA chapter here with over 100 members. And I say that because our classes are usually around 70-ish students. So a large number of them are involved with the chapter. And that means that a lot of us are interested in going to annual every year. After I went last year in Nashville, I had such a fantastic time and I knew I wanted to go again. So when the opportunity came up, we were given the opportunity to actually do the national patient counseling competition here at Wilkes. And I competed along with a few of my other classmates. So my best friend actually ended up um, going for that. He will be representing Wilkes this year. Um, and his name is Dylan Fox. He's a P3 student as well. But he actually represented us last year and he was in the top 10. So when I was congratulating him, we were kind of talking in his room because we're both resident assistants on campus. And he's like, hey, check out this, uh, this stipend opportunity on Facebook. You know, you have like 24 hours to do it, see if you can get the most likes. Right now you're shooting for around like 200 and some at that point. I think the leader was around that point. And I was like, hey, why not? Let's give it a shot and see what we can do. So I ended up pushing it out on the Facebook pages, on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. And you got um, blocked. <laughs> yeah, I got blocked. I got blocked um, on my account, on my best friend Dylan Fox's account, who's going to be representing us at APHE Annual. He got blocked. And my girlfriend, uh, she's in the nursing program here at Wilkes. I got her account blocked because in total, I think I shared it with about 2,100 people in less than an hour. So, yeah, you're Facebook didn't reason, like that. You're the reason the for the half stipend, by the way. I was like, that guy. <laughs> if you look at the – and I'm trying, not trying to bring math into the podcast here. But if you look at the curves on these likes – like you have an exponential curve that just kind of, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to get yeah. pharmacokinetics on everybody, but you know, you're like, that's a yeah, funny tone curve high. there. That's a dangerous curve, man. <laughs> it was, it was great. And I couldn't even thank you for offering the, the opportunity because I was banned from reaching out to anybody over Facebook for about a day and a half. But you've since recovered emotionally, spiritually, all of that stuff. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Well, let's talk about some of the opportunities. Uh, although I went to a, a top 10 school and I went to a, uh, a state school, the University of Maryland, um, I think the U.S. News and World Report list is completely unfair. It's completely skewed towards research. And mm -hmm. if you look at the first 40 or 50 colleges of pharmacy, whatever the number is, the only private uh, or the only smallish school uh, is Southern Cal, and that is not a small school at all. <laughs> so my first kind of question is, uh, tell me about uh, your the size of your school and how that makes it better. My wife went to Drake, so she went to a small liberal arts college and had a great experience. Yeah. Uh, tell me how it's really, I think it's better uh, to be in uh, a more compact school than it is to be at one of the giants. Absolutely. And I won't try to bash any of the larger schools because I've had the opportunity to interact with students from UNC and other colleges of pharmacy, and they are fantastic. I was exposed to Wilkes because I live about 45 minutes away, and it's always just been a, a keystone in the area for pharmacy. The closest one, other than us being about an hour and a half away in New York or two and a half hours away in Philadelphia, 
So at Wilkes, our pharmacy classes have about 72 students per class, and the faculty are absolutely fantastic at using that to have one-on-one interactions all the time. So I can honestly say that my interactions with my professors go way beyond the classroom in terms of professional and personal development because of those small ratios and the ability for them to afford so much extra care outside of the classroom to those students. So I would absolutely advocate for Wilkes, even though it is small, it absolutely packs a punch in being a really, really great program that prepares its students for a life after school. As far as uh, joining organizations, uh, often when uh, re- people start to start thinking about residencies, they start to think, oh, my my uh, CV is missing this or missing that. But I find the best residency candidates or job candidates in general are the ones that were giving the whole time and ended up in leadership positions because they had been giving the whole time and kind of gone through some steps. Uh, tell me what the steps are at Wilkes to go from uh, whatever position you were in to ending up as the student body president as a P3. Sure. Yeah. So in at Wilkes, we do have a six-year program. So two years of pre-farm and four years of pharmacy school, P1 through P4 year. So when I came here in 2014, I knew I wanted to be involved in leadership in some way, shape, or form. And that came out as the class of 2018 class president for student government here, where it's just the undergraduate version. So I worked my way up after that um, to become the executive treasurer of the student body and then the vice president of the student body. And then last year in 1718, I became the student body president for all of Wilkes University. And that was because our student government here is super heavily involved with student life, um, with a large budget that we can really impact the students with. So I had a fantastic time doing that. Um, I had to run a full campaign to actually be able to get elected to that position. And that, I think, prepared me for social media because I use so many different outlets for that. And then after I became a graduate student, technically in P3 year, I was eligible to um, become the pharmacy senate president. So pharmacy senate is essentially the student government version of the pharmacy school. Um, throughout my time at, in the School of Pharmacy, I was able to be the class of 2020 president and then um, pharmacy senate president in the 1819 school year. So those roles that I've played along with the other ones that um, I've been able to attain at Wilkes have helped prepare me with communication skills, with budgeting, because the budget for student government was five hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> and yeah, it was absolutely. And it, it, you, you might like your jaw might drop at that, but I have a great team behind me on my executive board that helped me to balance that and work through all of the challenges we faced throughout those years. So, if I didn't give them credit, I wouldn't be giving anyone credit at all because they were absolutely the rock that helped me to succeed um, and the organization as well. I'm just trying to put this in my head and maybe create a framework for other people. But at some time during one day, you did say something like, yeah, I've got this therapeutics exam and I've got to balance a half a million dollar budget. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. But um, our student activity fees here at Wilkes are a little on the higher side compared to other colleges in Pennsylvania. So when you gather all of those together, student government is tasked with budgeting out half a million dollars to some other organizations for their operating budgets, for our own operating budgets, and a whole mess of other things in between that. So I can say that I am absolutely prepared for a lot of other challenges that have to do with money than if I had not done that leadership role. One thing I'm always curious about, and and this is something that deans of colleges of pharmacy end up with, is that they have a responsibility to lead their group but then everyone also expects them to be the one to reach out. So when it comes to uh, things like uh, political meeting, meeting senators, meeting representatives, things like that, they're like, well, you're the president. You're the one that's going to go. So <laughs> tell me, how does that work in your particular positions where you are a president and have to uh, you know, do things like the budget and take care of uh, the student body, but also you're now expected to speak to the highest leadership? How do you balance those two or what opportunities have you had with those two? Yeah, so in undergraduate as the student body president for student government, I was on the board of trustees with the president of the university and all of the cabinet members along whoa, with the board. Whoa, the board of trustees for the college? 
Yeah, there was that was a position that the student government president sat in on, not as a voting member, but more as a figurehead, but with heavy emphasis on their viewpoints. I gotcha. No, I'm okay. So, uh, sat in on those. I got to meet a lot of the board of trustee members who I'm still luckily enough to be good friends with. Uh, and they're mostly alumni, which is really easy to connect with them. But I will say that one thing I was thankful for was that those connections I made helped me a lot in professional development. But um, I sat on that. I voted on or not voted on, but gave input on a lot of initiatives, gave representation to the students and gave their opinions forward. Transitioning into the pharmacy school with the dean's advisory council, which has representation from nearly every branch of pharmacy within northeastern Pennsylvania or Pennsylvania itself and even outside of it. Uh, we sit on that to help understand how we can further the school, whether that be academically, professionally, extracurricularly. So for me, it's just about managing time really well, but also being able to reach out to key students within the student body who may be able to give me their ideas and opinions and how I can kind of push those to higher ups and get success and help them see that it's not just a figurehead position, but one that's aimed at empowering them to change their experience at school. Now, you're in PLS too, so that means that your grades are probably pretty decent. So how do you have an assistant? Do you have a personal assistant? Is this like Van Wilder where you have the guy that just came and volunteered to help you? Or uh, how does how does that work? Yeah, for me, it's a lot of Google Calendar. I consider that my personal assistant. Okay. So Google Calendar is my best friend, and uh, that definitely helps me set up my day. But then again, while the positions and the titles may speak for themselves, I think, again, it goes back to having – great friends and colleagues and classmates and professors that make the experience a lot easier and a lot more fun for sure. Whether that's delegating duties or just asking for advice, there's no way I could do it all alone. Um, it's definitely because of them and the support I have from the School of Pharmacy or just at Wilkes in general that allows me to, to do all of those things. Well, someone like you, I think a lot of people would just say, well, where is he going to end up? It's kind of like uh... – a Netflix episode, you're like, I got to watch the next one. What's going to get, what's this guy going to do? So let's start actually with what you were, you had to already probably choose your APPEs, right? Yes. We year? actually just finished them up last week. Okay. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about how you made that decision or made those decisions? Was it more uh, on the side of discovery or you know exactly what you want to do with your life or you want to go sure. explore different places? Uh, how does that work at Wilkes? Yeah, so uh, we have a very good program here in terms of being able to connect with P4 students throughout the year to understand like what they've been going through, what APIs worked well for them, what didn't work well, and what can be approved upon. So we had an API poster fair earlier in the year where I kind of got to talk one-on-one -on -one with people. But even prior to that, during the summer, I actually did a leadership rotation with – or a leadership internship with CVS in Washington, D.C., and prior to that, I did one similar to it in Falmouth, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. But throughout that time, I kind of developed from wanting to do strictly community pharmacy to more of the administrative side and at a corporate position. So a lot of my rotations focused around leadership or government affairs. So my electives that I proposed to do, which I still have to hear back from one of them, one being at the FDA in uh, right. regulatory affairs. One um, at CBS Corporate through the Strategic Product Development API rotation in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. And one that I thought was super interesting um, was out in New Mexico. We have a rotation with the Navajo tribe as part of um, a, res or a rotation on their actual reservation at, in an ambulatory care setting. So that was more just to get out of um, northeastern Pennsylvania for a few weeks and kind of get a look at what it is outside of Pennsylvania and what it has to offer. Awesome. Well, then what do you want to do with your life? <laughs> or, or is that a decision you haven't maybe uh, quite come to yet or kind of discovering? I think that right off the bat for me, um, if I had to pick today what I was going to do, it would be to understand field leadership with um, more of like the larger chain pharmacies. Because I've worked with CVS for the past three-ish years or so, and with the internships I've done, I've had the the ability to look inside the the company and understand how it works a little bit better than most interns would get the opportunity to do. And that was super interesting for me. So at the end of the day, I would see myself at corporate in Rhode Island working to change 
company-wide initiatives and support pharmacy, advance the profession and impact both pharmacists, technicians, anyone that works in the company, but mostly patients as well. Okay, yeah. Um, RX Radio had a podcast episode with a district leader, and when you have 18 or 20 stores, if somebody calls in, it's not like you can go in to you know help. Yeah. Everything changes, and now you're leading, and, and he talked about how it was just a completely different skill set than working in a single pharmacy versus um, trying to lead in that way. So uh, if you were to pick a degree afterwards, uh, and I'm thinking MBA, but you might be thinking differently. Uh, what do you think you might look at later if you know you start moving up the corporate ladder, corporate pays for your next degree? Uh, what do you think, uh, what angle would you probably uh, try to approach? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, I definitely, I definitely think, think an MBA, MBA would be a further be a degree, degree if, if the company, the company would, be would be able to, able to uh, help, help me with that. that. I, college, college is certainly, is certainly not cheap, cheap. so, so uh, um, any help with that would be absolutely appreciated. But the University, the University of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh actually, actually offers a degree, a degree called, called an MSPBA. MSPBA. Okay, I'm saying, that saying that right. right. Um, um, where, where you, you that, that degree is actually a Master of Science in Pharmacy Business, Business Administration. Administration. So, so cool. that's, that's so, so specific, specific, and I think, I think that, that because, because it's at the University of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh which is in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania that, would that would be super accessible and super applicable to the job that I'm looking forward to in the future. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, uh, we usually try to keep it to around 20 minutes for drive time because that's what uh, most people want. But yeah. uh, I've asked you a bunch of questions. Uh, what are some things that maybe you want to get out there for those uh, P1s, P2s, or even those thinking about pharmacy school? Um, there's people on both sides of the fence saying things are tough right now, and other people are saying things are great right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So tell me a little bit about your thoughts or, or what you would want to say to somebody that's kind of moving up uh, in a, one of the classes that's maybe a little behind you. Sure. sure. If, you're if you're a P1, a P1 or a P2, P2 or a pre-pharmacy, pre-pharmacy student, student at that, that I, think I think the best, the best advice, advice I can, I can give you is to take, take every opportunity that comes into, into your path, path whether, whether that be regarding pharmacy or outside, outside of it, because, because the, the accomplishments that I was able to make with my friends at my side or my colleagues outside of the School of Pharmacy have been absolutely influential in my ability to grow personally and professionally. I also think that taking a risk every so often, a calculated risk is very important and whether that's joining a new organization you may not be familiar with or going on an internship in Washington, D.C. for five weeks, not knowing exactly what, um, you know, the the dynamic dynamic of the group would be, but but just just trying trying to differentiate differentiate yourself yourself the best possible 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 way you can because because everyone everyone is going to graduate graduate pharmacy pharmacy school and to be a pharmacist, pharmacist, you have to do that. that. But But it's it's important important that that when people read your CV, there's there's one to two two things and it doesn't have to be a huge list of them, but just one to two things that differentiate yourself. So whether that's a leadership position or volunteerism or internships, I think they all come together to make a person so unique that recruiters or fellowship directors or residency directors want to talk to them and want to hire them. So if you're hesitant about doing something, I say go for it because there's, in my, in my experience, I think the thing I've said to myself is you either win or you learn, not lose. So I think there's only a way to go up if you decide to take a risk that in the end could have huge benefits for you. Awesome. Well, Cody, thanks so much for being on the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Yeah, thank you, Tony. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the stipend. Thank you for the opportunity to get out there on Facebook and work with my friends again. Uh, I absolutely cannot say thank you enough. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag #PharmacyLeaders. 